So the three pillars of reparations that are relevant to uh, Black American descendants of persons who were enslaved in the United States are the following. The first pillar is the, uh, the horrors of slavery in and of itself. The second pillar is nearly a century of legal segregation in the United States, what we refer to as the Jim Crow period which had an associated wave of white terror campaigns uh, that, that took place during that, that phase in time. And then uh, the third pillar is associated with the period in the nation's history after the passage of the Civil Rights Acts of the 1960s and, uh, and, and, and a, sustained, uh, a sustained period of atrocities that continue to the present moment, which include mass incarceration in the United States, uh, incarceration of such a magnitude that if we look at black males separately, uh, black males have a higher incarceration rate and a higher total number of incarcerees than all of the women who are incarcerated across the entire planet. Um, in addition, uh, we have uh, uh, a recent wave of police killings of unarmed blacks. And we also have uh, a sustained pattern of credit and employment discrimination. And then uh, from my perspective as an economist, perhaps the most significant indicator of the inequality that besets American society between blacks and whites, the enormous racial wealth gap. And I'd like to emphasize that uh, if we were to look at the numbers, the share of wealth that is held by black Americans in the United States is approximately 2.6% of the nation's total wealth. Uh, the nation's total wealth runs in the vicinity of 100 to $110 billion. Uh, so blacks have, have less than 3% of that. Uh, on the other hand, we are 13% of the nation's population. And so if blacks were to have a share in the nation's wealth that was consistent or comparable with black share in the nation's population, then we would have 13% of the nation's wealth. And, and for that to occur, it would require uh, the acquisition on the part of black folks in the United States of an additional 10 to $12 trillion in wealth. Um, I wanna emphasize that wealth is distinct from income. I think people frequently confuse the two. Uh, when we're talking about wealth, we're talking about the difference between the value of what you own and the value of what you owe, or the difference between your assets and your liabilities. Or another way to think about it is wealth is the net value of your property. Uh, and this is distinct from income because income is a flow of resources that you get. Usually we think about it in terms of a year that's primarily associated with your earnings, whereas uh, wealth is associated with uh, what you own, deducting the expenses that you have associated with your debts. Uh, we also call wealth net worth. Uh, and, and, and this is what uh, we have so much less of as a community in comparison with whites, much less of in a relative sense than the differential in income between blacks and whites. Um, and, and wealth is particularly potent and significant or important because it actually provides you with protection from losses in income. So for example, if a family member who's the primary breadwinner loses their job, or if there's a medical emergency that confronts a family, their capacity to maintain a comfortable or decent standard of living is entirely contingent upon their wealth position. And uh, so the less wealth you have, the less economic security you have, the less opportunity to participate in this society because this is a country where the political process is driven by how much money you have and your capacity to fully participate uh, in, in the electoral process to influence electoral outcomes is heavily dependent on whether or not you have resources to do that. And so, uh, you know, if because, we think because about- Because we have being, to pay to play, right? You have to pay to play in some way. And so uh, if, if we think about uh, uh, the capacity to be a fully engaged individual in American society, to take, to take full advantage of all the opportunities that the society is supposed to provide us with, 
then we really have to have a situation in which there is equality in wealth uh, across racial lines. So, so doing your doing your work, Doctor Dirty, you've ascertained that the the way to solve this issue that we have with black folks having so much less than the average white family is to provide a reparations in order. What does that reparations look like according to to your studies? What would what would actually bring us up? Is it just money, or is it a, or is it assets? Is it those stocks and bonds, or is it land? I've heard different uh, scenarios, people, uh, different suggestions people have made for what would work. So in premise, if you had additional resources that were monetary, you could purchase land or you could purchase financial assets. Uh, We would have to structure the way in which we uh, distribute the reparations fund so that people actually would have an opportunity to do those sorts of things if that's their desire. I mean, I've always thought that Uh, There's a tremendous amount of passion for self-employment and entrepreneurship in the black community, but we've never had the the wealth foundation to support doing that on an extensive basis. And in communities where uh, blacks had engaged in a successful degree of entrepreneurship, uh, what frequently happened between the end of the Civil War and into the 1940s and 1950s were white massacres that not only destroyed segments of black business communities, but also resulted in whites appropriating much of that property for themselves. And and there's a host of examples of this, but maybe the most dramatic uh, might be Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921, where the Tulsa black community had a business district that was referred to as a black Wall Street. and, and this, this business district and the entire black Tulsa community in the Greenwood area was essentially leveled to the ground as a consequence of white violence. Right. So, so Dr. Dirt is explaining the, the situation that we are, that we find ourselves in. And he's saying that reparations is a remedy, can be a remedy and money. Cause I hear people talk about, Hey, what if we just give them college? I know a doctor, a doctor, there's a, a, a prominent uh, hip hop producer who has a big website called uh, DJ Vlad. And recently there's been a conversation about, well, uh, black since, since the reparations argument doesn't seem to be going over too well with, with white folks that we could, they could somehow placate black folks by giving them free college tuition. What would your response be to, to that suggestion? Well, I'm, I'm in favor of free college tuition. I'm in favor of free college tuition for everybody particularly from public universities. I don't know about private universities, but public universities, definitely. Uh, And I I would try to make some sort of accommodation for historically black colleges and universities, regardless of whether they were public or private in terms of the the tuition reduction. So I think think that's a great idea. I don't think that will eliminate the racial wealth gap. And that's, that's, that's my concern. So I don't view reparations as an alternative or a substitute for other types of universal policies that would benefit all Americans. I view reparations as a complement to those programs, a complement that would be specifically designed to address the racial wealth gap which I think these other kinds of policies really cannot do successfully. So, um, if, if, and also, if you think about it, uh, additional education in and of itself will not eliminate the racial wealth gap. Uh, one of the most disturbing statistics that's emerged from the research that we've been doing is the finding that blacks who have a college degree have two thirds of the net worth of whites who never finished high school. And so uh, the depth and severity of the racial wealth gap is so, so deep that we don't have a situation in which the standard ways in which people think blacks should improve their behavior will do much to close the racial wealth gap. Because when black folks do the right thing, the racial wealth gap persists. One of the things I've come to discover, doctor, uh, can I call you Sandy? Yeah, sure. That would be fine. Thank you, Sandy. (laughs) Okay. Um, 
one of the things I've discovered is most people don't understand the gravity of how bad off black people are in general. Yep. They see LeBron James. They see, you know, I don't know, any other, one of the rappers, one of, they see Oprah, they see Tyler Perry, they see, oh, Tyler Perry just opened up his own studio. He's got his own island in Atlanta. And, and black people seem to be doing just fine. And even black people don't understand the gravity to, to which we are behind. And, and, and I myself, uh, uh, Sandy, uh, I don't think I would have started a business had I known how underfunded I was. And right, how right. unreasonable, un, un, unreasonable so you, I was you, being. You, you, had, you have the entrepreneurial passion, but like so many people in our community, we don't have the same types of resources to start and to sustain our enterprises. And one of the things that's really critical is, you know, white folks disproportionately can let their new business enterprises fail without it penalizing their lives in the same way in which the average black person would have their life hindered, hampered, or undermined. So it's a riskier proposition for us. And, and you would have to argue that in some sense, black entrepreneurs are more, uh, more inclined to take risks than white entrepreneurs because the, uh, the adverse consequences of not being successful are much more severe. Uh, I would also add, I'm not sure why people look at examples of black celebrities as an indicator of the well-being of the whole black community. I mean, I don't think people look at white celebrities as an indicator of the condition or well-being of all whites in America. They don't look at age, prominent Asians as an indicator of the status or condition of all Asians. So I don't know why people tend to do that. But I want to emphasize that the richest or most successful black folks economically still are far, far behind the richest and most successful white folks economically. So if we were to look at the distribution of wealth in the United States overall, Whites own about 90% of the nation's wealth, but constitute about 75% of the nation's population. And that's the reverse of the pattern that we've already described with respect to, to Black Americans. And if you look at the 400 richest people in the United States in terms of wealth, who actually have an extraordinary share of the nation's wealth. I think they, they have about 20% of the wow. nation's wealth. I, I, I may be a little bit wrong on that, but I think that's correct. I don't think any of those 400 people are black. Byron Allen, huh? Yeah, I don't even, uh, no, no, Byron <laughs> Allen's not in that, in that category either. Yeah, yeah. 